So you're a Star Citizen backer. And one of the biggest questions you may have, besides when is the game coming out, is which ship or ships should I get? And while you have funded to support the ongoing development of the game, doesn't it make sense to get the most out of the money you've put in? Depending on the ships and vehicles you choose, you may end up with much less or much greater value for your money. For example, the $600 Anvil Carrick is a community favorite. If you want to purchase your own in-game, it would cost over 26 million credits. That's a lot of mining runs. Dividing these numbers tells us exactly how many credits you are effectively buying for each dollar. Let's compare this to the $220 Anvil Terrapin. You can purchase this in-game for about 2.5 million credits. As you can see, your dollar is earning you nearly four times more credits with the Carrick. And just for reference, if you want to buy UEC outright on the store, it costs one dollar per 1,000 credits. The case is even worse for vehicles like the Grey Cat, which, despite costing $15, can be purchased in-game with the earnings from a single mission. As a general rule, larger ships seem to be worth much more UEC per dollar than smaller ones. So if you're trying to decide how best to build your fleet, consider sticking with a few large ships as opposed to many small ships. The choice is ultimately up to you, and what you choose will vary based on your playstyle and your favorite ships. Now, CIG has stated that in-game ship prices are close to what they will be in the final game, but as with an alpha, everything is subject to change. The game is very much in development, and it's likely that many prices will be adjusted in the future. For example, why does the $260 Vanguard Warden cost over a million credits more than its upgraded variants? However, the general rule still applies that larger ships can provide much more value per dollar. This is especially useful if you are a current player of the game and are grinding for a ship in-game. It makes sense to use your pledge dollars for ships that will take longer to grind for, and to hold off purchasing ships that are cheap in-game. If you want to take a look at more UEC per dollar data yourself, I've included a link in the description from Reddit user Nick Lovin, who's compiled an excellent spreadsheet comparing most flight-ready ships. You may be wondering, why is this even important right now? Well, right now there's an event going on called the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo. During this time, nearly all ships will be available for purchase on the RSI website. If there's a certain ship you've been wanting, now might be the only time you can get it until next year. Another worry is that the ship you want may go up in price. We've seen this happen a lot as ships move from the concept phase to flight ready. The expo is running from November 20th until December 2nd, so if you're interested in updating your fleet, now is the time to do it. Thank you for watching the video. Please consider liking and subscribing for more content in the future. This has been Sub90, and I'll see you in the verse.